In this video, I'm going to show you how to customize your workspace. And what I mean by that is pretty much all of the tools and menus in this software can be customized. You can change their locations, um, change the size of things. So to get started, I'm going to show you most of the menus that have like toolbars that have a little dotted line along their left hand edge. That means I could move that toolbar by just clicking and dragging. I could move it off of the tool um, space by clicking and dragging, you know, over the empty workspace. And what I've done is made my align toolbar be a floating toolbar. And you'll see that there are several. So we've got our standard toolbar here. We've got our design toolbar here. And so those toolbars could be put, I guess, in different places. So if I wanted to put the align toolbar on this side and then have my tools up here, that's entirely up to you. You could put all of your tools up here. You could make a second um, row of toolbars at the top and not have any left-hand toolbars. So these things become entirely up to you as to, I guess, how you want them to be. Now, on a toolbar, at the right hand side, there's a very small little kind of triangle under a line. If you click on that, you can actually get a menu where you could add or remove or customize that toolbar. And so if I wanted to, I could choose to add additional tools to the toolbar. So it shows me the ones that are in it now. Um, but if I wanted to, I could say customize and you could actually go through and add new tools to your toolbar. So this may be um, you know, unnecessary in most cases, but if you really wanted to have, you could create your own custom toolbar with you know, your favorite tools on it or something like that and have it floating on top of your screen. It's really that customizable. Now, I don't generally move my toolbars around for my training because I like to leave them in the default location so that it makes it easy for people to follow along. But to be honest, I might change them if I was working you know, day in, day out, just to get at my own personal feeling. Now, there's uh, other things we can do. So for example, with the tool options and the object properties and the color palettes, they have little pins beside them. And notice here, if I was to just click on that pin, it rolls it up. Still, it still says tool options there, and it's there if I hover over, but if I move away, it rolls up. And you can do that with your object properties, roll it up, and your color palette, roll it up. So look how much more workspace I have visually available now by just simply making those auto hide. And then if I mouse over at any time, I can see them. So if you wanted to, let's say, draw a shape, right click to finish, and now you want to see its properties, you would hover over and say, oh, I see this is set as a stencil. Maybe I'll go in and add some new techniques and give myself some embroidery options and then hover over my object properties and give that a satin serial outline, then go over my tool options and give it a width. So you can see that I still have all the same tools available. They're just less in my visual space. Um, also with those toolbars, so you can pin them to make them stay open or and then they'll always be available or unpin them to make them roll up. Now, you can also take them and drag them off and make them floating just like any other toolbar so they don't have to be pinned to a toolbar space. Um, notice when I take these kind of Docker style roll up toolbars and mouse and hold them. Can you see the menu that becomes available to me? I've got the kind of outside ones. See when I mouse over that, it shows all, I'll put it there for you, Trevor. But if I go to this one, it, which is also a top, it'll put it at the top, but notice the difference. Up here, it puts it all the way across the top. Down here, it puts it most of the way across the top, but it leaves the space on the right for my object properties toolbar. See that? So I just docked it back in. And it's kind of small now. It's missing the second row of information. Well, I can bring my mouse to the lower edge of it and just drag that down to make this, you know, the rest of the information available. It's the same thing with your object properties. If I mouse right along the edge of it, I can make my object properties a larger box or a narrower box. 
So how much of your, you know, and depending on the amount of pixels available in your workspace, you could have a very big object properties box. I actually set my pixels reasonably small for training so that my toolbars stay nice and big and they're easy to find. But again, this is all customizable to you. So if I wanted to, I could, you know, take my color palette and drag it off and have it be a free floating color palette that was always available. Or I could have it one that just rolled up and hid, you know, when it wanted to. Or maybe you'd like to have your color palette at the top instead of on the bottom. You can do that or you can put it on the right hand side. And so by dragging over here, I can make my color palette be there, but then also have it roll up. See, so now I could have all my roll-ups in one place. Roll up over this one, roll up over that one. So I hope I haven't made this sound too complicated. It's just the concept that you can customize your workspace. And so obviously by making these changes, it makes the software look and feel very differently. And it may make it just easier for you to put your tools where you like them. So that's how you can use, uh, customize your workspace with the Creative Drawing software.